Here we have Ron Brown, Ron Eads, uh, and I'm Joe Broman. We are mostly referred to as R2J1. Uh, and our students collectively refer to us as the Revenge of the Sick. Uh, <laughs> the knockoff from the Revenge of the Sith, apparently. Uh, as many of you know, over the years, uh, we have been taking a look at the Cali lessons, trying to figure out what motivates people to use them, what they find uh, positive about them, what they find negative about them so that we might be able to move on and uh, make them better and more useful, not only for the students, but also for the professors. And that was part of our goal this year. For the last couple of years, we had been looking at it from the professor's side. We looked at some of the Cali surveys, the ABA surveys. We even conducted surveys at our individual law schools. And we're hoping to get some feedback and something that we could move on with. But there always seemed to be one loop that was left open. So this year, we decided to go ahead and take a look at what the students thought about all of this. So we did it from three perspectives. Uh, the broader perspective certainly was on the Cali webpage, where we got the greatest response. Uh, but then at our individual law schools, we also conducted some surveys where we obviously got a more limited response out of it. But generally, what we were getting seemed to be some common themes coming from the students, uh, predominantly on the positive side, and also some uh, negatives that they suggested that we might want to uh, use to address. Uh, later on in the future. Uh, my two colleagues, however, have had some interesting experiences regarding the survey process. So I'm going to let them describe to you some of their uh, experiences with this. Uh, what we discovered was that we've entered a new era in such things as giving surveys to your students. Because now giving a survey to your students is doing research on human subjects. And that's subject to human regulation. So before we could get go any further, uh, Ron and Ron had to get trained. <laughs> and you know, part of the experience was getting trained online, which was putting us into the, the role of students, which was an interesting leveling uh, experience. But the other thing is we, we discovered all the uh, protections we had to put in for our, our uh, human subjects as a result of the new regulations. And as a result of all the protections, the warnings, the, uh, the insulation to make sure that, that nobody felt coerced and nobody felt that they were uh, in, a, in any way being uh, abused by that, we created a system in which the survey was almost guaranteed not to get results. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things we really hoped to get at the schools, which we couldn't get online, was the people who weren't using it to respond to the survey. Uh, online, the only people who were going to find the survey were people who got to the Cali website. Uh, what we could do at school was distribute the uh, survey both online and in paper, and get students who were not doing it to respond. Uh, with the, all the protections for the human subjects, we produced uh, <laughs> at our law school 19 responses uh, out of 1,000 students. students. And uh, Ryan Eads was twice as successful at Louisville, 
gathering a total of 38 responses. <laughs> and so there's a certain limitation to the results that we produced. And so we're going to have to extrapolate a little more than we had originally thought we would need to. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. used to be great because you could say to a class, here are these surveys. Nobody leaves until they're finished. And you could get results. But those days are over. The, uh, the 38 responses, the, the U of L is smaller than, than NOVA. That's out of about 400 students. So we were, we were close to 10%. Pricer. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but, but Ron Brown is correct. I mean, it's uh, The voting commission is checking the accuracy. <laughs> so, Especially in Florida. <laughs> that, the, the process that you have to go through first, I mean, you have to go through the training, and then all of the materials had to be filed for me through a university committee uh, that was done by people who do this on a regular basis. So every time I would send it, they would send it back with everything that was wrong with it without any real assistance. Uh, and for me, it finally took a letter to the vice president for research before I got somebody to actually be willing to call me and help me work through the process uh, to get it done. And then, as, as Ron pointed out, the cover letter that they finally approved to go on, it had the list just clearly that it, it was not required, you didn't have to do it. If they felt in any way harassed, there was a university commission they could contact to complain about the level. Of, and I kept trying to explain, you know, I'm. I'm I understand, because when I did the training, I had to read the history of all of this. I understood that people had been abused in the past with medical treatment and, and all of this sort of bizarre uh, physical invasions. And, uh, and I wasn't going to do that. I was going to ask them to read a piece of paper. But what I wound up with is the cover letter to the, uh, to the survey itself goes to such length to explain why you shouldn't even be reading further. But I think most students just look at it and say, you know, I really don't have time to walk through this. And you just throw it away. And so it really is getting difficult uh, in a very simple kind of survey form to, uh, to process this sort of thing. So uh, we, got, we got very weak results from those kinds. And, and I think it does hurt us a little bit because, as he pointed out, the people who responded to the Cali survey are already using Cali, they know where the websites are. What we were really hoping to get is, you know, the people who hadn't heard of Cali, you know, had never heard of it, or, you know, uh, what is this thing? And of course, we didn't get that because, you know, we, because of this little problem. So if any of you are interested in doing human studies, uh, says, do it on a sabbatical or something. I mean, it takes a lot more time than you really think. Serve pizza. Serve pizza. <laughs> But apparently none of this applies to faculty evaluation. We're allowed to treat them as non-humans for those purposes. <laughs> uh, without going through the uh, controls and the institutional review boards and all of that. But then again, proving that timing is everything in the world. I got started about six weeks earlier than these two, and I got through on exempt status, which now no longer exists at our university. So timing does prove to be everything. But just a little forewarning to everyone, the simplest of things now have become quite complex and probably and, unnecessarily. And, and one of the ideas I had when we started this is I thought by the time we got to the Cali conference, we would just make the survey available to all of you and encourage all of you to do it at your school. And we, you know, before you know it, we'd have a lot of information. <coughs> Forget that. Uh, I'm not, you know, you're on your own if you want to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what <laughs> oh, there is a fee, yes, if you're interested in a consulting fee. <laughs> what kicked it out of um, just the normal user surveys that we can do that don't have to pass through the board? I mean, our university has said if it's just a user survey and services, you know, you don't have to go through. One of the clear exemptions seems to be if it's for quality control. If you're looking to make your service better, for instance, if we were to go through student services, and that's how faculty evaluations apparently you know, get through the, the exemption. If you go through looking to improve the quality of the service that the university is providing, that fits into an exempt status. The difficulty we found is we were going to publish the information. They told, at least at our university, as long as you don't tell anybody, then you don't have to go through this. <laughs> Why would you do this? <laughs> you, know? you can do the research as long as you're not going to use it. Right. <laughs> you're, you're free to go and go ahead and get the information, just don't use it for anything. And that would work out fine. Uh, but apparently what the universities are now facing is a convoluted system. Uh, they didn't anticipate the results of the regulations that they were putting in. Certainly there's a legitimate motivation for it. The problem that we find is it's now so broadly described that it's really limiting even the most innocent behavior. So just a little forewarning to everybody. Uh, yeah. But it, it, it was... And I know at this point you're going, innocent behavior, law mm -hmm. professor. 
Right. <laughs> Yes. Are they only applied to state actors? No, it, 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 it's a very broad application and it's federal regulation. Yeah. And it's, it's very much has to deal with privacy issues so that the information is not let out. And in no way should you be able to identify the person. Uh, but no matter how often we said that this was going to be anonymous and we put it in all of our paperwork, there were still all of these hoops that we had to go through. Um, and I, we would just like to forewarn everybody that this was an interesting task. Uh, it's doable, but you do need to go through the training and make sure you comply with all the federal regulations on it. But it also explains the more limited results. Right. Okay. So in any event, we got the results that we anticipated <laughs> we would get with the limited application that we would have out of that. Certainly the, the bulk of the um, responses came out of the Cali survey, so it would be no surprise that they would know about the, that the Cali lessons are there and what they're all about. So we got those results without shocking. I just want to know where that 1% was. You know, how, how do we get up 1% that didn't know anything about it? It must have been just out of the law schools and they were appeasing us by answering the surveys. What we were trying to find out at different levels regarding our survey uh, were the students' perspectives of one, what are your professors doing? Last year we got some results from the professors. Apparently there's a difference between the two. But this is the student's perception of what the professors are doing with this regarding assignments and the like. Uh, also, as we move through the survey, we're going, we broke it down into those students who actually used the Cali lessons and what they thought of it, and those who did not and why they were not using it. But it's interesting to find out we were using a frequency scale, one to five, one being uh, never, under any circumstances whatsoever, and five, any given time we use it. And for professors assigning it, we found out from our students that we're down about never, 1.5. And, and, and I want you to notice, just one thing, I want to, there's about two or three slides here. We asked the question two or three ways. Uh, how, how often have professors assigned the Cali lessons? How often have they suggested the Cali lessons? How often have they mentioned the Cali lessons? The number goes up a little bit, but not much. And when we get to the very end of it and kind of talk about some conclusions, I just, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So I want you to notice how low that number is on faculty members sort of making any kind of reference to that Cali lessons to students. And also what we did is we addressed the question in this area to the total population answering the survey. And then we asked it again of those students who actually were using the Cali lessons. Uh, because we were trying to find out what was motivating them to use it. Um, as we would want to find out from those who are not, what was motivating them not to do that. But we found this kind of interesting, that on the scale of 1 to 5, we were at a 1.5. And you just have to use them. Before and so, get, given the group that answered, this is probably skewed high. Mm -hmm. It's probably much lower. And not, not almost never, more like nearly. <laughs> <laughs> and we were doing it in degrees of usage also, because there is a sign, and then the next question was, well, they were suggest them. Well, this is an interesting move from 1.5 to 2.4. We're getting closer to somewhere in the middle on the 1 to 5 range. So at least there's some suggestion going on out there. Uh, but still, again, considering the numbers of students, we have 99% of the students answering this actually using the lessons. And they're still telling us that in terms of frequency of use, um, they're doing it apparently in spite of what the professors are doing, because this is even the suggestion level that you have here. Apparently, the students are quite motivated by all of this. Even backing it off a little bit, we asked if they just mention it. <laughs> again, trying to move through this in some degree of information. And again, we get a similar result as far as the suggestions were concerned. And so there is some mentioning going on out there or some suggesting. But um, it's a, it'll, we'll look later on and find out what really is moving the students through all of this. Have you heard about it from other students? Interestingly enough, apparently more is going on among the students about the Cali lessons than dealing with the faculty. And apparently it's student to student activity. Although there's some interesting results coming along later on about whether students actually would recommend these to other students and some of the answers that we get and the reasons why they give that. But even here, look at this, it's a range of one to five and the students are closer to at least that three level or above the mid level than the faculty would be. One of the things I thought about after we had done the survey and I looked at it and I began to wonder, with these numbers so low, both the faculty recommending and students among each other, I began to wonder, 
Uh, I wish we had asked, uh, are the librarians suggesting it to you? Are the information technology people suggesting it? Uh, if the school has some sort of academic support office or the academic support, I'm beginning to wonder where the students are learning about Cali because they're sure not learning about it from the faculty or the other students. I think it's from, now I'm speculating because I don't want to go through the whole process again doing a survey. <laughs> I think, I think it must be uh, librarians, academic support, and the IT people. That's where they're getting. Uh, and now I'm having to speculate because we don't have that question, but that's what kind of crossed my mind. Now, this is a little surprising because I know at, at our school, every student is given a Cali disc by their legal writing instructor and uh, at least an explanation of what it is. So all of them ought to have uh, said, I heard about it from the teacher. It was at least mentioned, um, but that wasn't the case. Well, one of the things that I find interesting is I'm one of those who will use it frequently, as you might expect, both in my contracts class and my properties class. Uh, when I do real estate transactions, when I do my real estate closing workshop the simulations, I get them in and want them to build up um, you know, the, the academic material. Um, and when I first get to them, whether it's in my contract or property class, and I say, you remember the disc? And of course the answer is no. Um, never got a disc, never saw a disc. I'm not in law school. Um, you get this whole variety of answers at any given moment during the semester. Um, and it, it is a chore to find a way to make it something they remember. I think that's part of the process. They seem to get so overwhelmed with so much in the beginning. Um, it, it's, if it's, I guess it's the adage that if it's worth saying once, it's worth saying more often and remind them repeatedly uh, about what is out there. That seems to fall by the wayside. We even find that as I move into my upper division classes, um, I'll recognize people who have been in my first year classes and I'll feel free to say some of you will remember those Cali lessons and you get that look like, where am I? Um, what class is this? What lessons are we talking about? So it is that repetition that we do seem to need with all that. But it, it's interesting the limited sources of information that they're working with. Then the question was, you know about it, have you ever used it? Those who know about it, 94% say we use it. Five? No. I'm still wondering about the 1%. <laughs> don't know. Where are you? <laughs> this is not a difficult test. <laughs> what happened here? 1%? There's no response out of that. Okay. Um, but ha having found. That's a, because they were warned in the introduction about <laughs> things that they were the answer. Don't identify yourself. You don't have to answer this. We will not reveal who you are. And apparently they took that literally. Don't reveal who you are. I answered nothing. I know nothing. Right. So, in any event, uh, the question comes up with those who answer yes. Um, we wanted to know about their usage patterns. What are you looking at? What's motivating you? That kind of thing. So, we move on. Have you ever used it to study for your courses? Duh. Well, one to five. Now we're moving up to four. This is a high frequency of use. Probably not as high as I would have expected, but at least we're in that four category coming out of all that. And this is just for a studying. This is, studying is different from cramming for exams per se or um, using it because some professor has assigned it as homework, as some of us might go ahead and do that. Here it really is, are you using it just for plain old-fashioned study? And we got a nice response out of that. Uh, four on the one to five frequency. So, so the suggestion is if they once get started using it, they're likely to continue. But it's the getting them started that's that's more difficult. Then the next, that's not cooperating. Okay, there we go. Teacher law professor assign it. Now these are the students who actually use it. We're trying to get into what's motivating them to make use of this. Here, even those who use it aren't doing it because professors are doing it. Remember, we had a 1.5 on the overall population. Here you have the students who are actually using it, and we're at a 1.4. So you know, the standard deviation is probably the same answer. We're in that same range. So it's not coming out of what the faculty is doing. And again, this. Yeah, again, notice. I mean, that was the point I kept noticing as I went through all of the questions. Uh, every time we asked the question a different way or under a different format, we got the same response. No. The faculty is not telling us about it. No, the faculty is not recommending it. No. Uh, in fact, I don't know if it's the next screen or the next one of them. 
Well, the next screen is the one percent that refuses to answer. No, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the required on factor. Th this is that one. Some of us will require it. I've gone through that process with a number of my classes. That it, it's required reading. Um, and of course, you get the answers. I have too much to read. Okay. But I have too much to read. Okay. Do it. You know, that's part of what you do for law. You have a lot to read. You have a lot of work to do. This is a skill that you will develop. This is just something that we do for a living. Um, and go ahead and do that. Obviously, most people aren't doing that, nor am I suggesting that people do what I do, but the reality of it is that these are beneficial, but they need to know about them, and they're not. we found out that they're not going to do anything unless somebody is showing the benefits of doing it. And we're going to get into what would motivate the non-users in just a little bit. So the requirement is really still on that almost never side. This was one of the, the numbers that kind of surprised me a little bit. You'll notice that the faculty doesn't mention it, doesn't require it, doesn't even put it in the syllabus. And I thought that was odd, especially the twin sites, for example, if you use it automatically raises them. And you almost have to make an effort to take them out of the twin site in order not to have them in your twin site in some way. And so, again, I thought this number compared with all those other, I mean, I just constantly am being told that the teachers of substantive law courses are not using Cali at all. I mean, the number is so low, it is amazing. Just every way we ask the question, we got the same result. Which makes it relatively consistent also with what professors were saying in an earlier survey that we'll go to in a few minutes. Is there a question over here? Oh, I'm sorry. So then we moved on. Again, gradation. Suggest. <laughs> no requirement, no homework assignment, just suggest. Well, we got a little bit of a better answer on that one. But again, remember we're on a scale of one to five out of this. And these are the students, remember we're in the category where we're speaking with the students who actually use the lessons. And we have professors at just barely moving off the never scale. Uh, so again, it's not the motivation that's coming out of the classroom or out of the faculty. Oops. So we decided to ask another question. <laughs> Were they suggested by other students? This one surprised me. I thought for sure, getting the results on the professor's <coughs> side and given the high frequency of the use, that it had to come from other students. But look at this. We're still only at a 2.4. We're barely right in the middle or the frequency, barely in the middle, at a 2.4. Again, that's, I mean, that, I'm convinced it's, now I'm convinced it's librarians, tech, and academic support people. Look at the use in class. By the way, if you've never used them in class, they're wonderful. They really do a number of things that are quite useful. And plus, they're fancy. They have neat colors to them, and you can play with them, and you can move around through them, especially if once you get familiar with them. And the students see them, and you can almost see the lights go on in the classroom. It's, oh, you can tell the ones who didn't use them by play, even though they were required. Suddenly you get the reaction, and you understand those who aren't, and you try to work with them a little bit to move them along. Um, but not even making use of them in class. And if you go through a lot of the subjects, they have wonderful questions that are in there, a lot of branching questions, which essentially it amounts to our Socratic dialogue that we would have with the students, whether they're right or wrong, we're still asking more questions to help them with their thought pattern, excuse me, their thought pattern, um, and still just down at that virtually never use factor for the faculty. But look at this result. For those who used them, on an intensity of one to five, were significantly over four. This, yes. this I thought was, was also very interesting. If you've been involved in writing Cali lessons or uh, uh, reviewing Cali lessons or doing anything with Cali lessons, you, you ought to feel good about this number. Uh, when the students get them, when they finally get around to seeing them somehow or another, they find them helpful. I mean, it's something that they're, they're telling us, this is good, I found them, uh, I found this very helpful. One of the things, we'll get to the very end, I want to come back to this, but what all of this has been telling me is the faculty is not rec recommending them. When the students find them, they find them very useful, very helpful, they like them, they'll go back to them, but the faculty is not, not going with them. And that's a very interesting 
thing that I think this, this little survey showed us. And I think what's quite helpful also is in our packet, what John Merrigan handed out to us, the excerpts from the student comments on why they liked uh, the Cali lessons. Um, we've done a, a variety of surveys over the years regarding faculty and all, but the, the students really hit, I think, hit the, uh, the central point. They hone in on what you're having problems with, and they clean up the problems. They clear them up for you. Uh, they reinforce the interactive aspect of it, reinforces your learning. One of the things I particularly liked in one of the positive comments was, I am exposed to different styles and approaches to the materials. The students find that as positive because people learn differently. And this gives them that opportunity to learn in some way that's different from what we might be doing in the classroom. And therefore, they're learning around us. They don't always learn from us. Uh, one of the other things they found particularly positive was the instant feedback, which they rarely will get in the classroom. And it's wonderful to be you know, Socratic, and it's wonderful to be obtuse and to leave open ends. But at some point or another, there has to be some kind of closure that's involved with all this. I'm particularly proud of one, uh, one of these comments. It helped me book property. I like the property guy. You know, come on. Uh, you know, I was really very pleased with that. And then the other one, property lessons are wonderful. Of course they are. But in any event, uh, the reality of all of this is that the students are identifying this. It helps you find the flaw in your reasoning, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it gives you the most important concepts, and this is what I like. It, then they introduce you to the subtleties. So a lot of times we have cases in our case books that deal with the subtleties, and nobody's giving the big picture yet. And the students get a skewed view of what the law is all about. This is another one that I thought was particularly positive. I outperformed everyone in my contract class receiving an A+. Plus. And the Cali lessons were my main secondary source. Mm -hmm. Aside from the horn books and all the others, that was the main secondary source. And the one I particularly liked over here is, it doesn't feel like studying. <laughs> Interestingly enough, there's something positive about all of that. Not everything has to have that burdensome study aspect to it. So when we hit this 4.3, it's not only that intensity level, but it's the type of comments that they're making they're, the students are identifying the things that we're hitting on for our reasons to create the Cali lessons and to get them out there. So that seemed kind of interesting, and I was very pleased with this. Um, and certainly, you have to ask the question, um, do you recommend the Cali lessons to your friends? 13% say no. Yeah, but you want to know the answer why. <laughs> now, by the way, 3% are not answering at all. Our 1% halfway through the survey has now mushroomed up to a 3% category. They really don't want to identify themselves at this stage of the game. But in any event, we will come back to, the, to this particular issue. Students who did not, now we go to the side where they did not use the Cali lesson. So we're trying to find out reasons why. Now here's something that's very important. You have to understand, we only had 200 and some students. So when we say these were answered by 2%, we're speaking about four students. Okay? Seriously, although these are comments as to why not, we're not talking about a significant part of this population saying there's something wrong. But these still are points that we should understand from the students. Yeah, I, I just I want to kind of repeat that. I, mean, I, I thought the responses from the students about how the Cali lessons were helpful and they liked them and used them are so strong. We're a little hesitant even to have slides that talk about what the, the negatives were because the, the number is really small. And I think the overwhelming response out of the survey is very positive about the lessons. But still, you know, if you get some negative comments, you have to look at them to, to at least think, well, is this, is this really a problem or not? So it is a small problem. On, on the other hand, Although there are not, there's no concentration of negatives, the amount of usage is still much lower than we would hope it would be. Right. And so we've got to somehow fit those two together, and I think that's what we're working on. But we also know from the earlier answers that we got that they weren't using them because other students were suggesting them. That. that intensity level was only in the two range anyway. Mid two range, 2.8, I think something in that category. So one, one of the answers is the Cali lesson disagrees with what I was taught in class. That really worries me because either one of two things, or maybe three, because it could be a combination of the two, probably is happening in class. Either 
we're in class as professors giving the signal, it's my way or the highway. Okay? And or, number two, the students come in with the perception that you take the teacher, you don't take that area of the law. That makes my skin crawl. Um, and we do have professors who are like that. And you do, unfortunately, get stuck in those kinds of situations. And therefore, you have to recognize that someday you're going to be a real lawyer, uh, and you need to know the real law, and so differentiate between what the real law is and what this person is doing, and work just with him or her as far as the final is concerned. But, but it also uh, illustrates one problem with using computerized lessons. All of us have had the experience of a student saying, uh, I, I read something that's different from what you said. And, and we've all had that experience with various foreign books or secondary materials. Uh, but, but the credible secondary materials, and even the case book or, or primary text you have, that can come up, a student will come up and point to something and say, this is different. And you go, well, no, it really isn't. Let, now, let me explain. Here's the general, and here's the exception, or here's why this is an oversimplification. And once we get into it, you'll see how there are different categories. Uh, and I ran in the last class I taught before I came up here, we were dealing with the effect of a, a holder in due course doctrine on the transfer of, of mortgages and notes. And there was a statement in the book that seemed to lead to one conclusion. But when you compared it to that section of Article 3, you saw that it was only part, not the complete story. And so what was said in the book was accurate to the extent that it went, but it wasn't complete. And, but with a book, they just come up and go, ah, uh, professor. Uh. On the other hand, when they run into that in the lesson, uh, then they feel more isolated. And, and if they knew how to print off the screen, uh, which they should, and then they could just come in and say, I read this, could you help me straighten this out? Uh, maybe that, or they knew they could do that. That might solve part of that problem. In our next two, they seem to be saying the same thing. The lessons take too long, I have too much to read already. It's probably a combination of that same time pressure that is there. Uh, it's difficult in working with the lessons to decide where your cutoff point really is. Sometimes you're trying to develop the really large picture, and therefore you need a longer lesson to complete the loop and the thinking process. Uh, otherwise, we end up breaking up the uh, overall thinking process into discrete steps. And the students may do step one on Monday, step two on Thursday, forgetting what step one was, step three the following Monday, and there, that connection's not being made. But that's a judgment call and working with it. The last one is, I'm sorry, also, And just on that, uh, I happen to teach torts and evidence, and I know torts has been, Calvin, been substantially reworked recently, and the lessons are, uh, are much the same length. They're, they're, they're good, tight lessons. Some of the evidence lessons are some of the very early lessons, and some of them are very long. And there has been some attempt to go through and make a few changes. So, you know, regardless, depending upon what area you teach in, uh, it's hard to tell what the student encountered. I mean, the lessons are too long. It might have been a student who decided to use it for the first time with an evidence lesson and pulled up one of these things that's in two parts, each part running over an hour or something in time length. Uh, and the lesson was very good, but yet, I mean, so there, it's hard to tell exactly what that quite, that answer means. There are some places where the lessons need some reworking to make them consistent with what Cali's doing now. Some other areas have already been reworked and so look very good. Uh, kind of hard to tell what that, what that might really mean. And then the last one I perceive as being that 1% that burgeoned into 3% that's not going to identify itself. Uh, there's no particular reason whatsoever out of that. So we ask the next question, if you're not a user, what might motivate you to go ahead and do this? Again, strong motivator being a five, um, not a motivator at all being a one. I don't think there's any surprise. This was the most frequently answered one, professor assigning a lesson, 3.4. But it's still, but still not four something, <laughs> not at four or five, you're not at four or six. So they don't do what we assign anyway. Well, they might not do it. There, there will be a population that won't do it. And I always suggest to people that if you are that way, please don't do them. Somebody has to set the bottom of the curve. Um, <laughs> somebody has to be there. Seriously, it's like using laptops in the classroom. Please use them. Somebody has to be at the bottom of the curve. I am. You know, get everybody on your I am list because some people will flunk out. You might as well be the one. <laughs> but it's serious. It's just being matter of fact about it. Uh, these, some of these aren't just aren't going to do it. 
and therefore they'll go. That's okay. That's part of the attrition rate. Of course, the deans hate that because then they lose the income. But nevertheless, <laughs> um, <laughs> the other, the professor even suggesting it has the same uh, motivation factor as assigning the lesson. Uh, then we get into some other uh, areas. One is dealing with the equipment itself and the software package, the interface being more usable from the student's perspective. I find surprisingly that many of the students coming in are not nearly as technologically savvy as I expected them to be coming in. We require the laptops, and I'm quite surprised to find that some of them just just barely can turn on that on-off button um, when they start up in class. They just don't know how to move through email. But they can all IM. They can all IM. There's no problem. Once that's up and running, they know how to IM. That's the first lesson. That's it. All the lessons go on IM. I've got the answer. <laughs> there we go. Here again, the lessons agreeing with my professor still not up in the four category. It's some motivator, but certainly, and the lessons being shorter, although they might have complained about the length of them and the time, you're down at the twos. Yeah. It really is not a very strong motivator out of that, but we get to see some direction that might motivate them. Those who did not use them or did not recommend the lessons. Oops, we have an extra S in there, Ron. Ron and Ron. Yes. Uh, made comments that generally fell into one of the following categories, broad categories, access problems, time problems, coverage problems, competition between students. Remember the students who said, we use them, we like them, we don't tell our friends about them? Wait until we get there. Uh oh, there we go. Oop, I gotta go back one. There we go, the access problems. Again, the question regarding the interface. Remember, you're only talking about four people essentially here, We're running around the 2% category with all of these. The site being down at some time. Well, welcome to the computerized world. Things aren't exactly the way you want them to be. Did anybody here try to get on the wireless network while we were here? Did you find a little bit of difficulty with getting on there? Well, that's part of being in the computerized world. You have to hunt around and find the way to make it work. That's all. The lessons are too difficult to download and run. There again, maybe a two-step process confused some people. Uh, it would be helpful if we listed them in the library in some more logical order. Absolutely. See, and that's a nice piece of information because now you have a user feedback. Well, when you have a series of lessons in one area, and I'm one of the major culprits, we did, Ron, and, Ron Brown and I did a series of them on covenants. We had a perfectly logical format that was set up in our own minds. Um, we're legends in our own minds. And in any event, um, in the lesson, we kept referring to a logical sequence. We just simply should have numbered these things in the order in which they should have taken them. And we will correct that with Deb in the next catalog. These are the kinds of things that you need to find out so that we make it user friendly. But it's still, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and I do think that the technical side of it, that even though this is a small number and a you know, small group, uh, I think we're, we might be seeing the technical problem at two points. One, at the Cali level, where you're trying to get into the online. And then also at their own law school level where they, they're using the computer in the law school. And the truth of the matter is, if you think about a student who feels a little pressed for time and they want to study, if there's a glitch at all, they're going to shut it off and go do something else. And so um, even though this may be a small number and not a great problem, I think Cali needs to work very hard to constantly make sure that getting to the Cali lessons is just seamless. I mean, it ought to be kind of a one-click thing. I know. One of the things I want to keep tinkering with working th with my twin site is if they go to my twin site, they call up the Cali lessons from the twin site and they click on it, they then are taken to the Cali site and they need to do another password to get in. And, and I want to try to figure out a way to just take all the little steps out. Again, as, as Joe said, we think all of these young people coming out of college are, I mean, they've got cell phones and iPods and they use an ATM. I don't use an ATM. And, and they think that, and we think they're really computer savvy. The truth of the matter is, if, if they've got to go to it and there's a little problem and then they need another password and they've got to try to remember what that is or they've got to call somebody, uh, five minutes of that and they're off of it. And I can understand that. So I think even though it's a small problem, Cali needs to continue to work on making it just seamless, where it's kind of you click on it and there it is. Uh, shouldn't be a failure. So it's a small problem, but I think it's one that you can continue to work on uh, in the future. Another area obviously revolves around time problems. Go figure, we're working with all students. They perceive, perceive time to be a problem. I've used them to, for the exam prep only because I don't have the time to do them during the school year. 
Um, that is a frequent comment that I get from the students that they have difficulty keeping the pace during the school year. Um, and, but it's something that we all have to deal with. And so I'm not terribly sympathetic. Uh, yes, some of the lessons are longer. That means you might stage them at a time when you have some more free time. Uh, it takes a lot of time. This one, I think, in the parentheses, the parenthetical statement, I think is the real statement, that if I had known about them earlier, um, this would have been a great source of introduction and review. Uh, this is apparently somebody who got stuck towards the end trying to get them in there and get ready for final exams. Uh, I already have enough material to go through. I hear that with Warren books. No matter what it is that you assign, you get that. Uh, the length of time with the lessons, the next to the last comment that's there, some are two to three hours. Yes, some of them are longer, especially in the older formats, and I am guilty of making one of the lessons in the newer format longer, but it was one that seemed to be necessary in order to achieve the purpose of the lesson. Um, and the last one, again, um, it's another time problem statement. This is a frequent comment that will come from the students, but I don't think it's any different from anything else that we've heard for any other material, for secondary material. Uh, I've had students ask me this year, why do you assign cases that are longer than three pages? I should be able to understand it within three pages. Um, this is just the nature of what they do today. Everything is instant feedback, quick move from one area to another. Um, they, they multitask, and in essence, they do more than one thing incorrectly at the same time. Uh, and so, I mean, this is, this is their way of life. If it, it can be superficial and we can get away with just being vague about it, then that works for them. And we're putting pressure on them not to be that way. And I think the time problems fit in that category. The coverage, uh, I'm sorry. The time problem, just one thing. The time problem, I, I thought was interesting. The idea that the student says, I use them only for exam prep, or if I know about them earlier, that relates again to the faculty not talking about them. I don't think Cali lessons work best as exam prep. They work much better as very early in covering the topic and then just using their own outline. So again, I kind of see a connection back to those, those numbers we talked about earlier, very low uh, presentation by faculty and students finding out about it, maybe from the library, maybe from their academic support officer, and then suddenly trying to cram for the exam with them, and that creates time problems. And under, under the coverage problems, I like the first one uh, where it says that they're not always in perfect sync with the professor's goals in class. If the professors aren't talking about them and they're not assigning them, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's, it's what the students are inferring, perhaps. Uh, and again, as Ron Brown said earlier, maybe they're even missing the point with whatever they're doing and they're not going to the professor and getting explanations because the professor's not talking about it. So how would the student really know at that stage? Uh, the other comment that we have here that we have no lessons on Crim Pro an extremely limited number on con law. If I recall correctly, it was one student, but it did address that coverage issue, that there are some topics that are out there that maybe we should be looking at as a group for developing lessons. Yeah, and, I, and uh, we, we put it on here, and even though it's it's one of these, uh, law students love being irate. I, they, I don't know I'm absolutely dismayed. You know, as if, you know, people are dying or something. You're not doing anything. Uh, How dare you ask me? <laughs> yeah, and so, okay, that's just there, but it did sort of raise the question that I think that anyone who is a Cali author who works with Cali needs to constantly think about. Uh, the law continues to change. Old lessons have to constantly be updated. Uh, in order to make it really a good source, there needs to be extensive coverage. Again, I know in the area of evidence, there are very old lessons. Some of them are sort of long and cover too big an area. Uh, the whole evidence section needs to be almost completely redone. Uh, there are other areas out there, I'm sure, that have those same kinds of problems. So, yeah, this is sort of the one irate student who was probably mad about something else and took it out on us. <laughs> yeah. But at least it gave us a chance to kind of say, well, okay, that, there is a little bit of a difficulty here, and that's just something that Cal ought to watch. Remember the 13% that wouldn't tell their friends about it? Wall schools can cut it. Why give up the books? I don't recommend them purely because of the competition. They work. The fewer of them that know about it, the better I get. <laughs> and I want to leg up sometimes. That explains our 13% to a great extent. To a great extent. And they, these were relatively common answers, by the way. These, these set a theme. Uh, among the students who weren't going to tell their friends about it. I thought those were some of the most positive comments sure. about the Cali lessons. Yeah. 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 The students thought they were so good they were going to hide them. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I think it's perfect. I love it. And the nice thing is they don't have to raise her a book. That's right. They don't have to <laughs> sleep like that. So now we're at the point for open discussion regarding all of this. Questions, answers, and the like. Go ahead. Yeah, um, just to, uh, as a librarian, just to support what Ronnie just said, that, that um, I use mine as a research class, <coughs> considered a non substantive class. But, uh, yeah. And then I, 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 you know, I tell students in the class, you know, there are other kind of classes that I find that, uh, that they, they don't use as well. And, and, and the reference test, I tell the ability for good uh, secondary materials, rather than saying go buy an outline, a commercial outline. And there is major competition, obviously, from the commercial outlines because there are tables in your lobby. Uh, as soon as you walk in as a first-year student, they're sitting there. Yeah. But I, I think that's an important part because I think most students want a comprehensive secondary text uh, or secondary source for a course. And Cali doesn't offer that. Uh, there's no course of which I know where you could say, use the Cali lessons and you'll be set. You won't need anything else. And so I think students, either because the professor tells them or because that's the scuttlebutt, get a secondary source. They get uh, the horn book or they get an Emanuel's or a Gilbert's or some other thing. And that means the Cali lessons are pushed to third position. And so they're only going to be reached if there's some motivating factor. And the motiva motivating factor might be uh, something's really difficult, like the rule against perpetuities. Uh, or that it becomes the time of the semester for exam review, and they're looking for something for exam review. And I think that's why we saw the reflection that it's used uh, as an exam review, rather than what we think it should be, which is learning the material. And I think that's one thing that Cali needs to really address, because if you could offer it as an alternative, uh, then people would use that second and then only move on to the other things third. Uh, the other thing is I think that there's going to be some resistance no matter what. I've used Cali for extra credit. Now, you, you offer it to students extra credit if you hand in the certificates, and that's the nice thing about the Cali license. They'll print out certificates of completion so that it produces evidence. And, and Joe has done this too. We offer extra credit for completion of the following list of, of lessons over the semester. And we point out to the students, this will also help you prepare for the exam. Now, what could be better? Here, for free, something that helps you better prepare for the exam, so you'll do better on the exam, and you'll get extra credit. And yet, every semester I've had some students who don't do it. And I, I, I'm mystified. How could you turn down that offer? And I've heard people say, well, I ran out of time, or I didn't, uh, or I didn't get started early enough, or it takes all my control to not get BAM! <laughs> Go find something else. If you can't do this, you, you certainly shouldn't be a lawyer. But let me go to Deb and then I'll come up. Okay. Um, first, I, I want to support Ron. I, I know that Kelly is distributed through, yeah, <laughs> through the <laughs> library. Through the library. We're actually the same person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that the library is a large point. I think a lot of schools do distribute it through their libraries. Um, in terms of what students are saying, I think more students, more professors are at least suggesting it than your evidence reveals. I think students don't remember or hear as much because, you know, how many times we give an assignment, oh, I, I didn't hear you, you do that. I, so I think it is more suggested than that evidence Can reveals. Can I give you a piece of information from the ABA survey that we used last year? Faculty, percentage mentioning the Cali lessons, 15% of the faculty responded, responded that you mentioned it. The 25% will say they recommend it, 11% say they assign it, 18% say they require it. I don't think they get all added up. I think there's a spillover of pretty much the same people. There's not a lot according to the professor. I don't mean to contradict you, okay. but yeah, it, yeah. it's interesting that we got, I'm sorry. Well, but if one of those 15% the first year professor has you know, all the students, it would be higher. And I think even with 15%, you're not going to hit 50% of the students. You're going to hit, in some schools, greater than 50%. Well, I, and, and this is, but I thought this this low number on faculty recommending, and, and now we're kind of debating, is it 15 or 18? Uh, it's a low number, whatever it is. 
And I think there is a very low uh, faculty involvement. And, and I'm going to even make it narrower than that. Uh, and I know, I think you said that you know, you're part of the writing faculty, not a substitute teacher. I think what is happening uh, is Cali lessons are being used by the librarians and those teaching legal research or the, the legal writing, uh, or they're being recommended by the academic support. They're not being recommended by those teaching the substantive courses. And I, and I think we've kind of got a disconnect going on right now uh, with Cali between the, the teachers in the old traditional uh, substantive courses and others. And I think that's a disconnect. And just as a, a setting through a, a presentation that I wasn't, I probably should have been listening to it, but I decided to pull out, because Ron Brown had mentioned you'd done this too, I pulled out the list of people here this year and I counted through and looked at, everybody had their title listed, and I counted the ones that listed themselves as a professor of law. If they listed themselves as professor of law and librarian, I didn't count, because that their, their main work is in the library. So I'm counting up those who view themselves as primarily law teachers. Some of those probably teach legal writing and not such many courses, but I couldn't tell that. So I just count 24 out of 380-something people, I think is what... So to this year at this conference, uh, I came to 6.4% of the people here this year are people basically who see themselves as primarily uh, substantive law teachers, not with their activity somewhere else. And a few of those are probably part-time administrators because I have discovered that my friend Joe has now gone to the dark side. <laughs> and, so, and so I couldn't, and since I knew that, but I went ahead and counted him anyway because I didn't feel it was fair to count him out already because there's probably some others. But anyway, so there's a very low number of people who are involved in a daily basis in teaching and researching substantive courses, and that is their primary job function, who are involved in Cali at all. Uh, and they're obviously not recommending the courses and that's so whether the number is 6, 8, 10, 15 percent, 18, and we could debate exactly what, the number is very low. Uh, I know, for example, at our law school, we have had the tech people who also teach the, the legal research handing out the disc. I've already talked to them this fall. What we're going to do is we're not going to hand it out during orientation. I'm going to try to keep talking to them, try to get them to hand it out about the second or third week of school. We'll have pizza, and I'll be there. One of the people who teaches a substantive course will say, look, I've written some of these. These are good lessons, and they're also lessons in property instead of procedure. So, so that the students don't make the disconnect. I think some students are saying, oh, well, that's for legal research. I, there are no substantive law courses in that. So I think one of the overwhelming senses I had from looking at these survey results is that I personally, at the University of Louisville, needed to do some work as a substantive law teacher to get these involved. I think Cali, and I'm not talking about the group, I mean, I'm talking about the Cali board, not the Cali editorial board, but the board, uh, needs to start thinking about, is there kind of a disconnect these days between the uh, Cali organization and people who view themselves as primarily substantive law teachers and research? I we think there a, is a disconnect. We have a couple more questions we'll get to before we go. Bill, Joe, and then I'll be over. I think Ron has some good comments, and I know last year, Deb, at the AALS, at the booth, we had folks more or less hopping the Cali lessons. But I think <laughs> the Cali board needs to be at the WLS New Teachers Conference. Uh, we need to be putting those lessons in for early teachers, doing things like you're talking about, of, uh, introducing them to students by people that the students perceive as substantive law teachers. Because they're wonderful lessons, but I'm not sure that that eight or ten thousand law teachers or whatever number there are actually believe it. And until the students get that message from who they think is the the leaders, um, it's hard. And and they're free. I mean, this is something that primarily at most schools they're getting absolutely free. But Deb, I think we should also look at, I mean, I'm no library cataloger, uh, but maybe we ought to catalog these individual lessons yeah. in the library catalogs, and we might want to arrange for 
uh, as a project to have a lessons catalog. Or bib records. Bib records okay. for the, thank you. I knew there was a cataloging <laughs> term for that. <laughs> we have a couple of questions left over here. Do yeah. you still have yours? I just wanted to say that I think, and this is exactly, there needs to be more evangelism um, on the faculty because, um, you know, I think, I think it's true that there's a, there's a cadre of, and I don't want to be uh, prejudicial or anything, but older faculty members who, you know, these are gimmicks. Careful. Really like, okay, sorry about that. So, and, and, and so, I mean, I'm the and, oldest one in here. And us young guys are out yeah. there. <laughs> that, I think that's a good point. Take a look at the age. Of the faculty who did show up, I think you're exactly wrong. Okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> Let's finish up here so we get everybody to lunch. I just have an observation. I teach legal research at Georgia State University, and we used Cali lessons in conjunction with readings that we created, and the Cali lessons were supposedly required, but it was on your honor. We surveyed the students, and well, 75% of the class was on the survey, three to four sections. And what we found, one of the findings was that... Wait, before you revealed the findings, did you go through IRB training? I did. Oh, I, did. I, did. I, was, I was getting ready to do this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I will present my findings. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and what I want to say, I have a lot of the findings here, but 81% um, of the students that responded to the survey said that they will use Cali in the future for other subjects. So what I want to say is my observation is even if it's not a substantive law course, you need to catch them on their way into law school when they're one else. And I mean, at Georgia State, we preach Cali, we use them, and you know, it's part an integral part of our legal research program. And um, I, I don't think in this case it's uh, a, a matter of it being substantive versus non-substantive. I just really think people need to think about catching them on the way in. They have to get familiar so, with it. Yeah, familiar they, with and they're, they're real excited about it. And they're, they, I mean, I have data here that suggests they like to do Kelly lessons rather than read a book. And, um, you know, it's, it's different. They're, it's, it's different than reading cases. And, Thank you. I'll, I'll one more last question. Go ahead. And if, if Kelly wants to get faculty involved, I think they need to look at the sessions that are offered here at this conference, which tend to be more hardware software, yes. rather than application in the attention of the Thank you. Did you have one last comment? Thank you. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to evangelize the faculty, I think you need to emphasize and let us know about the lesson text feature. Yes. Because most, I think most faculty don't use it because they're concerned about they don't know what the scope is or the way they can And they say it's too much trouble for them to find out is what they tend to say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Make lesson text a short way to do it. Maybe it's not. Thank you. We'll take other questions down here. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs>